friends uh, in the last uh, class uh, in cell biology we have discussed uh, different features uh, of cell ultrastructure of the cell as well as cell organelle uh, up to nucleus we have discussed in this lesson we will have the discussion about the chromosomes so chromosomes before uh, uh, discussing actual chromosomes let us we see the history of chromosomes in the chromosomes in prokaryotic organisms there are no chromosomes but in prokaryotic organisms like bacteria there are no chromosomes in bacteria we have only single circular double stranded dna single circular double stranded dna it is not associated with the histone proteins hence the chromosomes are not formed so but in some cases in some textbooks in bacterial chromosome is said to be pro chromosome it is a pro chromosome now eukaryotic chromosomes eukaryotic chromosomes are associated dna plus histone proteins is equal to uh, chromosomes chromatin fiber chromatin fiber completely condensated to form chromosomes here now let us we see the dark chromo means color stoma means chromo means color and soma means body a colorful body is known as colorful body is known as uh, chromosomes which can be stainable which is stainable in the division itself a colorful body that is visible in the um, during the meiosis or mitosis is known as chromosome darkly stained darkly stained rod shaped bodies visible under light microscope during cell division more particularly metaphase and anaphase these are the particular stages so because in chromosomes in nucleus they are uh, in the form of chromatin during the division phase after prophase uh, particularly at metaphase chromosomes get maximum condensation maximum condensation will forms rod shaped structure rod shaped structures that is clearly visible during metaphase and anaphase uh, stages of both mitosis and meiosis are known as chromosomes so chromosomes uh, referred as chromosomes strasburger for the first time strasburger for the first time he discovered strasburger for the first time he have seen this chromosomes discovered this chromosomes in 1875 in 1875 term chromosome was given by waldeyer term chromosome was given by waldeyer once again chromosomes what are chromosomes chromo means color soma means body colorful body that kids that can be easily visible under metaphase and anaphase stages of mitosis and meiosis are known as chromosomes so here you can see the rod shaped structures here this is original electron microscopic uh, ex uh, expanded or exposed chromosome so these are the chromosome that are clearly visible under that are the clearly visible under microscope during uh, the during the division phase you can see these chromosomes inside which you can see the dna also now let us we see the next uh, slide that is uh, shape of the chromosomes chromosomes will get different shapes depending on the position of the centromere basically chromosomes are classified into various categories based on number of centromeres as well as position of centromeres now let us we see the first type of chromosomes there are four types of chromosomes and the this is uh, only if only one centromere is there that is uh, monocentric if two centromere are there dicentric if many centromeres are there that is called as polycentric chromosome one centromere monocentric two centromere dicentric and many centromeres polycentric polycentric and dicentric uh, are not uh, uh, frequently seen they are very rare and monocentric chromosomes are frequently seen further this monocentric chromosomes are further classified into four categories depending on the position of the centromere if the centromere is present in the middle of the chromosome it is called as metacentric chromosome if the centromere is present uh, just besides the uh, center um, center portion of the chromosome so apart from the cent central portion is called as submetacentric if the centromere is near to one end not one end near to one end it is called as uh, Um, acrocentric if the centromere is completely at one end that is called as telocentric so we have metacentric we have submetacentric we have acrocentric we have telocentric so dear friends you just see what happens in this um, mitosis uh, particularly anaphase stage if the spindle fibers attaches here spindle fibers attaches on the centromere 
they will pull the chromosomes towards to the centromere while pulling the chromosomes towards to the centromere they will get different shapes if the centromere is in the middle so what happens uh, they will get v shape while pulling the chromosomes towards to the poles if the centromere is uh, at uh, uh, near to the one end, near to uh, to the cent central portion that is called a submetacentric submetacentric chromosomes will get l, l shape and acrocentric chromosomes will get j shape while telocentric chromosomes will get i shape so dear friends you should remember that point number 1 the chromosomes are classified into basic categories basic categories depending on the number of centromeres monocentric dicentric polycentric uh, monocentric chromosomes further classified into four categories that is metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric if the centromere is exactly in the center that is metacentric near to the center submetacentric and uh, near to one end that is acrocentric at one end it is called as telocentric further the chromosomes are classified into some other categories that is uh, one i will mention that is uh, autosomes they are autosomes and second variety are known as allosomes the chromosomes that is purely uh, meant for the uh, influencing or controlling the somatic or vegetative characters are known as autosomes somatic somatic whereas chromosomes that determine sex characters that are called as allosomes for example we can say x and y chromosomes x and y chromosomes are the uh, at allosomes they are known as sex chromosomes whereas the chromosomes that determine the vegetative or somatic or body characters are known as autosomes dear friends it is very important to remember that autosomes are present in somatic cells allosomes are presenting all the somatic cells they are also present in somatic cells because somatic cells we have 44 plus xx in female 44 plus xy in male x y in male so the autosomes and allosomes both are present in body cells as well as germline cells both are present in body cells as well as germline cells so autosomes are present in both body cells and germline cells allosomes are present in both body cells means somatic cells as well as germline cells but the thing is they determine the autosomal characters and they determine allosomal or sexual characters so based on the characters they decide based on the characters they decide they may be autosomes they may be allosomes based on the number of centromeres they may be monocentric dicentric polycentric based on the position of the centromere they may be metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric based on the uh, largest size largest chromosomes are seen in uh, polytini chromosomes polytini chromosomes and uh, lamp brush chromosomes polytini chromosomes are seen poly many tiny thread polytini chromosomes are seen in salivary glands salivary glands of uh, drosophila salivary glands of some insects they have polytini chromosomes lamp brush chromosomes are found in the oocytes of amphibians amphibians best example is that is frog oocytes of amphibians these are the largest chromosomes these are the largest chromosomes so apart from the regular chromosomes we have polytini chromosomes in the salivary gland salivary glands of some insects belongs to the order diptera and lambrus chromosomes are found in the oocytes of amphibians these are the largest chromosomes lamp brush chimney cleaning like chimney cleaning like even in division phase the chromosomes remain in uncondensated stage because of that reason lamp brush will get a shape like uh, this is unwinded dna still synthesizing some sort of uh, uh, rna and proteins this uh, one of the thread i have taken from lamp brush chromosome it appears like a uh, brush chimney cleaning brush so this is called as lambrus chromosomes whereas in case of polytini chromosomes many th threads are possible so the polytini chromosomes are seen in the salivary glands i will discuss in detail in the coming classes so autosomes and allosomes polytini chromosomes and lambrus chromosomes are called as giant chromosomes or largest chromosomes or supernumerary chromosomes they are very large chromosomes now coming back to the actual history that is given in our content 
based on the shape of the chromosome based on the shape of the chromosome it is usually observed shape of the chromosome usually observed during the uh, anaphase particularly you see this is the centromere if centromere pulls the chromosomes towards the poles this chromosome will get a shape depending on the position of the centromere they may get uh, v shape they may get l shape they may get uh, j shape and some uh, and as well as i shape the shape of the chromosome is determined by the position of the centromere centromere have generally three different shapes rod shaped uh, depending on centromere the position of the rod shaped as in the case of telocentric j shape acrocentric l shape uh, submetacentric and v shape uh, metacentric these shapes are observed when the centromere occupies the terminal subterminal midity position of the centromeres respectively now let us we see the structure of the chromosomes before we entering into the actual chromosomes i will i would like to show i would like to show the actual uh, peripheral diagram of the chromosome so let us we say so this is one chromosome which is already duplicated during the synthetic phase of uh, during the synthetic phase of uh, mitosis or meiosis interface so the chromosome so outer peripheral layer outer peripheral layer of the chromosome is known as pellicle or matrix pellicle or matrix this is covered by nucleolar material or some amorphous substances nucleolar material are some amorphous substances which have some amount of carbohydrates and uh, proteins carbohydrates and proteins so this is pellicle or matrix inside the nucleus inside the nucleus inside the nucleus we will have the chromatic chromatin material the chromatin material is made up of dna and histone proteins dna and uh, histone proteins dna and histone proteins compactly formed this chromatin this chromatin sometimes some in positions uh, that is deeply stained in some other areas that is uh, loosely stained the loosely st loosely packed and slightly stained regions are known as are known as euchromatin whereas uh, tightly packed regions are known as heterochromatin dear friends anyhow you have to see this entire chromosome is made up of compactly packed super coiled super coiled chromatin material so this chromatin material this this tip of the chromosome is known as telomere tip of the chromosome is known as telomere and uh, the peripheral outer is called as pellicle inside which we found the chromatin material chromatin is made up of chromatin is made up of i told you dna plus histones dna plus histones certain chromatin in certain places it is uh, uh, it is loosely packed this region is called as euchromatin certain regions it is tightly packed heterochromatin this is called as heterochromatin the non stainable part of the chromosome non stainable part of the chromosome is known as centromere non stainable part of the chromosome is known as centromere centromere is covered by knob like structures centromere is covered by knob like structures these knob like structures present on the both side of the centromere is known as kinetochore knob like structures are known as kinetochore kinetochores are arranged kinetochores are having some spoke like structure spokes these are called as radial spokes these are called as radial spokes this radial spokes helps in the attachment of uh, spindle fibers during mitosis or meiosis these are called as radial spokes these are called as radial spokes now friends you can understand the tip of the chromosome is known as telomere tip of the chromosome is known as telomere the non stainable part of the chromosome is known as non stainable part of the chromosome is known as um, centromere centromere is covered by two knob like structures that is called as kinetochores kinetochores helps in the implantation of spindle fibers during 
anaphase uh, during metaphase and subsequently during the division of the chromosomes particularly anaphase and at the same time in some chromosomes in some chromosomes apart from apart from the primary constriction apart from the primary constriction we have a secondary constriction also we have secondary constriction this is called as secondary constriction after the secondary constriction a knob like a ball like structure one ball like structure is present this is called as trabant or satellite satellite so satellite this is satellite or trabant so first of all we have seen one constriction here constriction means a notch like structure or not like structure after that we have the second constriction second constriction hence it is called as secondary constriction secondary constriction what is secondary constriction apart from the primary constriction if it is having any knob like structure that is called as secondary constriction dear friends you should remember that secondary constrictions are not seen in all chromosomes certain chromosomes only have secondary constrictions so presence of secondary constrictions so specific number of chromosomes specific number of chromosomes will only have secondary constrictions so this chromosomes with the secondary constrictions are involved in the synthesis of uh, rrna involved in the synthesis of rrna ribosomal rna rrna that forms the ribosomes ribosomes are very essential for the formation of uh, proteins and uh, polypeptides and hormones in the living cell so proteins are important enzymes are important hence ribosomes are important ribosomes are formed of rrna rrna is important rrna is formed from the chromosomes which have secondary constriction the secondary constriction secondary constriction is uh, present only in the chromosomes which have the information which have the dna information regarding the synthesis of rrna now friends we have seen this uh, we are see we are looking at this uh, different parts of the chromosomes i will explain each and everything i will explain each and everything here that is one i would like to say telomere what are term terminal portion of the chromosomes are known as telomeres in a chromosomes generally generally in g1 phase one chromosome will have two telomeres when the chromosome enters into s phase which is duplicated then it will have 1 2 3 4 4 telomeres duplicated chromosome will have 4 telomeres telomeres ka what is the responsibility duty and function of the telomere telomere works for the giving stability to the chromosomes if two such chromosomes which are having no which are having no centromere which are having no telomeres if two chromosomes are now having no telomeres then what happened this is not having telomere this is also not having telomere so this is a uh, centromere when two such chromosomes show uh, do not have telomeres they would like to fuse to form dicentric chromosome this is of course abnormal case so when the telomere is present these chromosomes which do not fuse with one another so chromosomes maintain identity chromosomes have the stability because of the telomeres dear friends you should remember telomeres uh, are completely heterochromatized they are not having any communication with the other chromosomes after about the telomeres by out of the chromosome it is uh, covered by a proteinaceous and amorphous and some size uh, types of carbohydrates amorphous carbohydrates and proteins amorphous means it has no particular morphology that is called as amorphous amorphous substances are deposited over the uh, central uh, chromatin material it is called as pellicle and the chromosome is made up of a material called as chromatin so while chromatin particularly in meiosis particularly at particular stages like leptotene the chromatin may form some chromatin may form some kind of uh, bead like structure some kind of bead like structure during what happens during compaction of the chromatin into chromosomes somewhere else you will find some ties knots and uh, uh, not like structures not not like structure is called as chromomeres so that chromomeres are having no physical uh, importance physical and chemical importance is not there but actual chromomere means while the compaction of chromatin material whenever wherever a not like structure is formed that is called as chromomere 
So now after the chromomeres, we will discuss about the centromere. This is called as primary constriction. Primary constriction. To say it is a human body, one should have the head. To say it is a, a, any particular structure, that primary part of the body is known as primary constriction. Primary constriction. Centromere is not in terms of the position center. Centromere, as, uh, the, the part of the chromosome which have an important, uh, important structure for which it can divide, by which it can divide into two daughter chromosomes, it is called as centromere. Centromere is also defined as non-stainable part of the chromosome. Sir, what is stainable? What is stainable? Chromatin material is stainable. Chromatin material is stainable. What is chromatin material? DNA plus histone proteins. DNA is acidic. Dear friends, should remember here, DNA is acidic. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, acidic. So it can bind with basic dyes, means alkaline dyes. This is uh, uh, alkaline dyes that is fuel gen. Fuel gen is alkaline, uh, basic dye. Fuel gen is basic dye. Whereas histones, histones are basic in nature. So they can bind acidic dyes. Acidic color material, staining material, that is acetocarmine, that is acetocarmine. This is a special chemical extracted from uh, wings of some certain insects. So now li let you see, the, the chromatin is made up of both DNA and histone proteins. If you stain DNA or if you stain histones, the chromatin material will be stained and chromosomes will be stained either of the DNA or of the histones if you stain so as the chromatin is made up of compact arrangement of histones and DNA then the total chromosome will be stained so basic dyes like uh, fuel gen and acidic dyes, dyes like uh, acetocarbon both can stain the material so at the certain places at certain places the chromatin will take much material much stain chromatin will take uh, much of a uh, stain here i told you uh, the earlier certain places uh, much uh, dye is absorbed so this is uh, the reason where heterochromatin is present where heterochromatin is present that will get more stain because heterochromatin is tightly packed tightly packed dna or chromatin material loosely arranged dna is known as euchromatin tightly packed dna is known as heterochromatin euchromatin have active genes heterochromatin have no active genes euchromatin is loosely packed heterochromatin is tightly packed euchromatin will take less stain heterochromatin will take more stain euchromatin is transcriptionally active heterochromatin is transcriptionally inactive so the same chromatin by giving the same stain at certain places the stain is given more at certain places stain is even less stain is absorbed less the differential property of the absorption of this uh, stain is called as heteropycnosis what do you call it as heteropycnosis what is heteropycnosis? Differential absorption property of the stain by the chromatin material is known as hetero different pycnosis absorption. So, euchromatin will take more stain because it is tightly packed heterochromatin. Tightly packed chromatin. Heterochromatin will take more stain because it is tightly packed and having more chromatin material. Euchromatin is slightly, lightly stained because it has less amount of chromatin. Differential property, differential staining property of this chromatin material is known as heteropycnosis. Heteropycnosis. Now, dear friends, you may ask one question here that is, what is the role of heterochromatin and what is the role of euchromatin? In the earlier classes, I have explained you already the DNA is the genetic material, DNA is the chemical basis, chemical basis of uh, life, chemical basis of life, uh, whereas uh, protoplasm is the physical basis of life, chromosomes are the physical basis of heredity, chromosomes are the physical basis of heredity. So, if the cell is having, if the cell is having protoplasm, that is living cell. So, what is a life? What is a living? That is, if your protoplasm is present, that is living. What it means? Physical basis of life is known as protoplasm. Physical basis of heredity. If one organism produces what is heredity? Transmission of characters from one generation to other generation is known as heredity. In heredity, what are the physical uh, things what we will observe in the cell? That are chromosomes. So, physical basis of heredity is known as chromosomes. The chemical basis 
basis of heredity is DNA because DNA is the chemical constitution, molecular chemical constitution of the cells that is present inside the chromosomes and inside the nucleus. I repeat again, physical basis of life is protoplasm, physical basis of heredity is chromosomes and chemical basis of heredity is DNA. Chromosome is made up of chromatin, chromatin is made up of DNA plus histone proteins. DNA plus histone proteins. DNA is generally acidic in nature. Histone generally basic in nature. Acidic part DNA, basic part proteins compactly associated. I will tell you how they are associated. Compactly associated to form chromatin. Chromatin here and there sometimes that during the compaction or packing somewhere else they will form a knot like structure. That knot like structures are called as chromum ears. Chromum ears now the dna different part we are now observing the different parts of uh, chromosome so the centrum ER is both sides it is covered by a protective layer is called as uh, kinetochores kinetochores are having radial spokes radial spokes helps in the implantation of uh, implantation of uh, implantation of spindle fibers during uh, mitosis or meiosis spindle fibers during mitosis or meiosis these are the spindle fibers they are attaching for the uh, chromosomes itself spindle fiber uh, spindle fibers attached only on centromere but not on secondary construction secondary construction have no role in the attachment of spindle fibers it has no role in the division of centromere do no role in the division of chromosomes what is secondary constriction? So constriction apart from the primary it is called a secondary constriction. What is the part of chromosome beyond the secondary constriction? The round ball like structure beyond the secondary constriction is known as um, uh, trabant or satellite. And the chromosomes which have satellites are called as sat chromosomes. Chromosomes which have satellite are known as sat chromosomes. What is the importance of sat chromosomes in evolutionary observation? So sat chromosomes, sat chromosomes are having sat chromosomes are having the information regarding rRNA, rRNA synthesize ribosome, ribosome synthesize proteins. So proteins and enzymes. So rRNA synthesizing genes are highly conserved. Highly conserved means what? From monkey to different stages of the human being evolution. Monkey, chi, gorilla, chimpanzee and then Australopithecus, uh, uh, Neanderthal and modern man. During the course of evolution what happened? Everything is changed. Number of chromosomes. Uh, chimpanzee, gorilla they have 48 chromosomes. In human beings 46 chromosomes. Reduction of chromosome number has gave some specific features. So lot of changes are taken place from monkey to man but there is no single change in the rRNA synthesizing genes hence these genes are said to be highly conserved they never undergo any kind of mutations the highly conserved genes are present in certain chromosomes they are called as satellite chromo sat chromosomes sat chromosomes now now you can understand the structure of the chromosome let us we see what the matter it is given so in the nucleus itself the dna molecules packed into thread like structures called as chromosomes no doubt chromosomes are seen in eukaryotic organisms only inside the nucleus which are compactly formed in the form of chromatin in interface in the form of chromatin interface in the form of uh, um, chromosomes in division phase in the form of chromosomes in division phase each chromosome is made up of DNA tightly coiled many times around the proteins called as histones that supports the structure I will tell you how what is the role of histone proteins here if any thread like structure if it is delicately present it cannot give physical support so that is where DNA is wrapped around the histone proteins earlier it is believed that the G according to uh, earlier theories like Sutton and Bowery chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed by Sutton and Bowery in Sutton and Bowery's theory what is he have explained uh, the genes are present like a beads on a string genes are present like a beads on a string beads on a string beads on a string so see, this is you can see beads like structures these bead like structures are said to be genes but later it is proved technical molecular biology have completely developed the technology is developed later it is provide proved that this is the histone protein this is the dna wrapped around means the dna is present on the thread on the balls the thread is present on the balls so earlier concept is beads on a string now this concept is string on beads string on beads this is of course this is a bead and this is the dna is wrapped around around the uh, a bead like structure so old classical concept is 
beads and string new concept is string on beads i will explain in the coming slides so around the made up of dna is tightly coiled many times around the proteins called as histones that supports the structure and uh, here you will see some other important point each chromosome consists of uh, centromere i have explained chromatids i have explained secondary constriction i have explained satellite i have explained telomere chromonema and matrix are pellicle matrix are pellicle that covers the chromosomes now it is very clear telomere terminal part of the chromosome centromere the cent primary constriction of the chromosome secondary constriction any notch like structure apart from the primary constriction is known as secondary constriction the ball like structure apart from the secondary constriction is known as trabant or satellite chromosomes having satellite are known as sat chromosomes and the chromatin material is maybe euchromatin slightly stained maybe heterochromatin uh, deeply stained deeply stained tightly packed region of the chromatin is known as heterochromatin transcriptionally inactive it has no role in the transcription it does not have any information and at the same time heterochromatin provides mechanical support so centromere both sides of the centromere on the side of telomeres the chromatin material is in the form of heterochromatin chromatin material is in the form of heterochromatin now what you can understand dear students heterochromatin is provides mechanical support till the moment you better understand the role of heterochromatin is only giving mechanical support but heterochromatin is having lot of information which will never be useful for the present life of the human beings which will be having information for future generations so kind of changes may take place in the dna and the new dna have to be formed according to mutations and um, and if any gene is mutated the mutated gene again wind up and a new gene will come lot of information secret information is there in the heterochromatin in human genome project 1990 they have revealed that only euchromatin constitutes 2 percentage less than 2 percentage of the dna whereas heterochromatin constitutes 98 percentage of the dna what exactly means uh, the content actually dna content what is useful for the survival of the life of 100 years of human beings is only less than 2 percentage that is functional dna what is exactly not used by the human being what is exactly not useful to the human beings for its entire life but carried throughout the life in each and every cell of human beings is about 98 percentage which is highly repetitive dna which is also known as junk dna now friends uh, it is clear that what is euchromatin what is heterochromatin functionally active is euchromatin that is less than 2 percentage functionally inactive it has some information which is a secret of the nature it will be revealed after million of years that is called as heterochromatin the heterochromatin or junk dna is about 98 percentage right now what is the role of uh, heterochromatin that will give rise the physical support to the chromosomes now the cell cycle of uh, the chromosomes uh, is over before the chromosomes uh, i will uh, before i finish uh, i i will let you explain uh, the simplest uh, method how the dna is wrapped around the histone proteins so dear friend this is the dna so this is the dna so dna is wrapped around histone proteins there are histone proteins are basic proteins they are h1 h2a h2b h3 h4 there are five types of histone proteins are there so h2a h2b h3 h4 so uh, h1 is h1 is said to be the linker protein h1 is said to be the linker protein now here what happens so in case of uh, in case of this uh, this h2a h2b h3 h4 dimers of h2a h2a h2b h2b h3 h3 h4 h4 how many proteins here eight proteins means dimers of this dimers of these proteins four proteins dimer means two times so dimer will give eight proteins the eight protein structure that is formed by the fusion of eight proteins is known as octomer eight proteins together it is constitutes octomer around the octomer dna is wrapped one and a half circle one and half circle means one complete ten and half turn so the dna is wrapped around the histone protein octomer the octomer is also known as core octomer is also known as core core plus dna core plus dna core plus dna is equal to nucleosome 
nucleosome dear friends the term nucleosome was coined by odat term nucleosome was coined by odat so one nucleosome one nucleosome is made up of histone proteins eight histone proteins eight histone proteins is known as octamer or core around the octamer the dna is wrapped around the dna is wrapped around one and half circle the dna plus histone proteins is known as nucleosome the term nucleosome was coined by odet like such nucleosomes like such nucleosomes you can see this is a nucleosome 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 like such nucleosomes many nucleosomes are wrapped around by histone proteins and uh, this forms uh, so this is dna and this dna dna and dna dna so dna is wrapped around the histone proteins to get the physical support to get the physical support when the dna is having enough physical support uh, that can form the chromatin properly that can form the chromatin properly now you can understand you can observe it is very easily by observing this uh, and be, before that uh, i will explain here some histone proteins are present uh, to connect the two nucleosomes between two nucleosomes what are present between two nucleosomes what are present these are linker proteins are there so nucleosomes are connected by linkers nucleosomes are connected by linker linker is formed by h1 protein linker is formed by h1 protein what is the h1 protein that is linker protein linker protein <coughs> will connect the two nucleosomes in such way many nucleosomes will form a thread like structure that thread like structure is arranged like a telephone cradle uh, wire telephone cradle wire so how it is arranged like that in that case they are arranged now you can see here so this is the dna the dna is arranged uh, uh, attached with the uh, histone proteins histone proteins form the nucleosomes the nucleosomes here what you can understand the nucleosomes are forming a spherical structure this spherical structure is called as chromatin fiber the chromatin fiber ultimately forms the chromosomes in dna in molecular biology i will explain in detail how the chromosome is formed because there you will understand the structure of the chromosome then uh, structure of the dna then it will be more comfortable to you to understand what exactly the nucleus of formation so here how you can say the dna is uh, packed in such a way spirally to form a chromatin fiber chromatin fiber is making a long thread like structure which ultimately forms the chromatids so anyhow what the important concept you are you have to understand dna is very delicate two na two in 20 angstrom minutes 2 nanometers diameter the distance between the two strands of the dna is 20 angstrom minutes or 2 nanometers such a delicate thin dna uh, during its uh, uh, process of compaction they may may not get physical support that is why they are wrapped around the histone proteins histone proteins uh, wrapped around the histone proteins will provide the enough uh, physical support to the uh, dna and uh, and uh, physical uh, strength also and the protection also and it's provided by the histone proteins now along with the histone proteins basic uh, basic uh, packing of dna is low level and high level at low level packing it will be associated with histones at a high level packing it will be associated super coiling of dna for the to formation of chromatids it forms non histone proteins whereas histone proteins are basic in nature non histone proteins are acidic in nature so dear friends so this is the packing of uh, dna now let us we see the important part that is cell division cell cycle and cell division rodolf virchow proposed the cell lineage theory omnicellular e cellular omnicellular e cellular what exactly mean by omnicellular e cellular that is all cells are formed from the pre existing cells by division so actually cell theory was proposed by sliden and swan sliden and swan proposed the cell theory according to the cell theory cell is the unit cell is the structural unit cell is the functional unit the third concept of the cell theory was proposed by rudolf virchow rudolf virchow proposed that cell lineage theory cell inheritance theory cell theory third concept of cell theory that is omnicellular e cellular what is omnicellular e cellular that is all cells are formed from the pre existing cells by division Carl Nageli for the first time the new cells arise from the division of the pre-existing cells is the statement for the first time it is given by the Carl Nageli and uh, we have Strasburger here the nuclei arise from the even not only the cells the true nuclei the nuclei the new nuclei are formed in the division of the existing nuclei 
and the types of cell division what we will observe in case of living organisms is of three types the division uh, the division without associated with the spindle fibers is known as uh, a mitosis the division which is associated with the spindle fibers is mitosis and meiosis equational division homeotypic division there is no reduction in the chromosome number somatic cell division body cell division vegetative cell division is mitosis and uh, meiosis uh, what is meiosis the important division which helps in the reduction of the chromosome number from a diploid body haploid gametes are formed due to meiosis meiosis maintains the stable chromosome number in a constant species i repeat again meiosis maintain the stable chromosome number in the species whereas mitosis maintain in the stable chromosome number in a individual here it is the body if any accidental mechanical injury cut is happened new cells are formed if the old cells have 46 chromosomes and new cells will also have 46 chromosomes what it indicates what it indicates in a body wherever there is a division that is a mitotic division wound healing division mitotic division repairing cell repairing division mitotic division parental cell and daughter cells will have equal number of chromosomes in mitotic division somatic cell division mitotic division vegetative cell division mitotic division plant growth and development takes place by means of mitotic division so mitotic division maintains the stable chromosome number throughout the somatic cells of the body itself whereas meiosis meiosis maintains stable chromosome number in the uh, species itself a human species in australia america london russia europe wherever you go the number of chromosomes is constant that is 2n is equal to 46 n is equal to 46 so any individual will have 46 chromosomes before the gamete formation sperm cell formation egg cell formation in the female body sperm cell formation in the male body there the meiosis takes place and the 46 will become 23 sperm cell is 23 egg cell is 23 fusion zygote embryo and the new individual they will also have that uh, person will also have 46 chromosomes maintenance of stable chromosome number in a particular species is the function of the meiosis maintenance of stable chromosome number in the uh, individual in an organism is the function of uh, mitosis both mitosis and meiosis uh, takes place in uh, diploid organisms uh, in association with uh, in association with the spindle formation a division without spindle formation is known as amitosis is seen in lower organisms like amoeba paramecium euglena and bacteria so division without uh, having spindle fiber association is known as amitosis so amitosis is a primitive type of division so dear friends before any division before any division particularly mitosis and meiosis so the, what are the sequential events are happening altogether it is known as cell cycle so this is the small part of fraction of a, a 24 hours of time i have taken after 24 hours you only one hour will have uh, one hour only will be the me, um, division phase one hour is the division phase rest of the rest of the phase rest of the phase is known as interphase rest of the phase is interphase cell wants to prepare cell wants to prepare for the division this complete phase is known as interphase dear friends you see 23 hours a cell will be in interphase that is non dividing phase non dividing phase and 23 hours that cell will prepare for its division 23 hours it will prepare for its division and when within one hour it will undergo division so so cell in cell cycle in cell cycle what you can observe in cell cycle what you can observe here uh, only one hour is the division and majority portion of the part of the cell cycle is interphase in interphase uh, we have three stages here yeah. we in interphase we have three stages here the first stage of the interphase is g1 gap 1 or pre synthetic phase pre synthetic phase in p synthetic phase that is g1 and the next phase what will have is uh, next phase we have uh, synthetic phase in synthetic phase dna replication takes place duplication of chromosome uh, chromosomes takes place duplication of chromosome duplication of chromosome but not duplication of chromosome number in remain constant the chromosome number remains constant and finally we have an another stage we have an another stage that is called as g2 stage g2 stage is called as post synthetic and 
pre division stage post synthetic and pre division stage dear friends the red color part of the red color part of the cell cycle is red color part of the cell cycle is what you will understand here red color part of the cell cycle is mitosis or meiosis this is popularly known as m phase and initially this is g1 and then s yes, and then g2 stages this is called as gap 1 this is called as synthetic phase this is gap 1 phase and this is gap 2 phase and uh, mitosis or meiosis is known as m phase mitosis or meiosis known as m m means mitosis or meiosis complete life cycle of a cell complete life cycle of a cell is called as cell cycle a typical eukaryotic cell is illustrated by human chick cells in culture human uh, chin cells and these cells divide once approximately in 24 hours but uh, whereas in the case of yeast uh, can progress the, the cell division only about uh, 90 minutes yeast will take the uh, cell division within uh, 90 minutes yeast can progress through the cell cycle in only 90 minutes so 23 hours so the same the yeast of course uh, undergoes mitosis division so 23 hours uh, preparation and 1 hour division is the uh, cell cycle what is cell cycle it includes interphase it includes interphase interphase is the largest phase of the cell cycle and uh, this is up to this this is interphase this is interphase so interphase interphase is the largest phase of the cell cycle in interphase cell wants to have different types of functions more particularly protein synthesis etc in division phase we have only in division phase we have only division of chromosomes in interphase what is the fundamental differences in the interphase interphase chromatin division phase chromosomes interphase nucleus in division phase only chromosomes interphase nucleolus division phase only chromosomes chromosomes there are no nucleus interphase uh, um, uh, the uh, different cell organelle are doing different types of functions large vacuole xyz is seen but in division phase nothing is visible except the chromosomes and uh, uh, even spindle fibers are not visible unless uh, they are stained so now uh, friends so uh, you can understand preparation for a division is known as cell uh, interphase division is known as m phase now let us we see the next uh, next cycle here interphase cell cycle involves two important stages the one is interphase in the middle stage of the cell cycle and because of the this uh, interphase between two division space why it is interphase it is occurring in between two divisions interphase growth growth of the cell increases and prepares for itself for the next division interphase is most active phase metabolism of the cell increases earlier it is also believed to be the resting phase why interphase is to be called as a, is called as a resting phase in terms of division it is taking rest in terms of division it is taking rest but in terms of metabolism it is very active it is highly active protein synthesis is taking place rna synthesis is taking place active protein synthesis active lipid synthesis new cell organelle synthesis every dna synthesis everything takes place means it is cell is highly active interphase is not resting phase interphase is active phase interphase is believed to be resting phase in terms of the division it is not taking division hence it is resting now cell cycle the changes are not visible under microscope because everything is in the form of a chromatin there is no chromosomes to observe so cell cycle the interphase is not easily observed so some scientists termed as interphase is a resting phase but now it is known as that uh, it is very active phase of the cell cycle now g1 phase g1 phase is also known as pre dna this is the g1 phase here in this circle it is mentioned g1 is the of course uh, maximum phase for the protein synthesis maximum phase for the protein synthesis is the g1 phase so g1 phase is the uh, also known as pre dna synthesis because dna synthesis takes place in the s phase before to s phase that is pre dna synthetic phase or first gap phase longest phase of cell cycle it is around uh, 12 hours and more than 12 hours is seen during dna during g1 phase the cell organelle increase in size and number rapidly synthesis of different types of rna and proteins takes place and uh, due to the availability in gna rna is synthesized and as well as proteins uh, 
and whatever the proteins uh, required for the synthetic phase they are synthesis synthesized in the g1 phase so cell uh, in g1 that is preparing all enzymes for s2 phase in yes uh, dna replication has taken place uh, and then it is enters into g2 phase in g2 phase what happens in g2 phase all enzymes and proteins lipids and all uh, atp xyz required for the division phase uh, they are required in the g2 phase and it is enter into metaphase or meiosis mitosis or meiosis now you see here the s phase dna synthesis takes place replication of dna and synthesis of histone proteins takes place replication of cytoplasmic dna may occur in any stage of the cell cycle dear friends what is cytoplasmic dna the dna present in the mitochondria and mitochondria and uh, cyto um, chloroplast mitochondria and uh, chloroplast plastidal dna chondrial dna cytoplasmic dna plasma genes or maternal dna or non mendelian dna non mendelian genes they are replicated in any stage of the cell cycle now cell cycle can remain arrested only in g1 phase that the g1 phase is known as g0 this is called a checkpoint if g1 is completed cell cycle is completed if g1 is not completed cell cycle will never go ahead so what is the checkpoint g1 if g1 remains uh, never enter g1 is not completed that means g1 is in g0 phase all the cells that are not dividing are in g0 phase the g0 phase is known as arrest phase until the uh, communicating cells until the sub uh, sub uh, near by cells give any information to divide if cut and wound is happen the other cells the nearby existing cells will give information to the peripheral cells to, you have to get divide now until the information gets now cell is dividing further it means that all the cells which are not dividing they are in g0 phase now is it okay now let us we see the next phase uh, that is g2 phase g2 phase is second gap as post dna synthesis phase this is pre mitosis phase after g2 phase what happened that cell enters into cell enters into mitosis or uh, mitosis or meiosis that is called as uh, uh, pre mitotic phase number of cell organelle increase in cell actual preparation or final preparation of cell division takes place in g2 phase during this phase special materials required for the cell division synthesize that is tubulin protein for the synthesis of uh, that is um, spindle fibers required for the formation of spindle fibers cell division involves enormous expenditure of energy the cell is to prepare atp in the atp in the g2 phase and now the division phase division phase is um, m phase m phase is uh, in textbook it is mentioned that most uh, dramatic phase it is having different types of metabolic uh, changes like uh, prophase metaphase anaphase spindle formation spindle disappearance a cell plate formation subsequent division of two daughter cells formation of cell wall instantly instantly changes the cells are visibly they show some changes which can be observed under microscope uh, at different stages then this is called as dramatic stage uh, the division phase of m phase is uh, uh, is also known as mitotic phase the phase of the shortest time of the cell cycle as i told you and uh, uh, not exactly 23 hours of 24 so mostly that may be varies from uh, plant to plant uh, species to species and cell to cell not exactly 12 hours 7 hours and 5 hours 12 hours 15 hours. not exact that kind of uh, consideration let you remind different stages will take different time so only one thing what we have explain is what is maximum what is uh, minimum time it happens in comparison with the total interface division phase will be completed earlier with a very short time so it has uh, two stages that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis division of nucleus division of chromosomes karyokinesis whereas division of uh, cytoplasm division of cytoplasm is known as cytokinesis so cell division can be completed in two stages that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis now the first is mitosis the mitosis is uh, mito equal uh, cis means division equal division is mitosis the term mitosis was proposed by fleming here are the one pa parental cell duplication of chromosomes alignment the start to division division two daughter cells are formed if the chromosome in parental cell if it is chromosome number is 14 and each cell will have co14 because before in synthetic phase number of chromosomes constant number of chromatid increases 
so that is the reason why uh, so 14 chromosomes 14 chromatids but here 14 chromosomes 28 chromatids 28 chromatids divided again to 14 chrom chromosomes and 14 chromosomes and slide and mitosis produced genetically identical cells which are similar to the mother cells is the statement given by the slide number of chromosomes remains same in the daughter cells whereas in case of meiosis number of chromosomes will be reduced to half so in mitosis we see the longest phase of the mitosis uh, the karyokinesis the nuclear division is divided into four stages as you know very well what are the four important stages of uh, karyokinesis that is prophase metaphase anaphase and uh, telophase what is pro initial beginning so prophase longest phase of metabolism cell size increases chromatin threads condensate to form chromosome initiation of uh, condensation of chromosomes takes place in prophase centriole start moving towards to the end of the end of the prophase centriole start moving to the two opposite poles chromatin chromatin starts condensation into chromosomes so astral race forms due to the gelation of uh, proteins around the centrioles so these are centrioles they will form astral rays astral rays astral rays astral spindle fibers and astral spindle fibers astral spindle fibers they appear as a star shaped spindle fibers are formed in all directions because the cell is to have the support from all directions uh, this is the cell it is the centrum here they produce a spindle fiber this side this side this side and this side so thereby the position of centrum here will become constant this kind of uh, spindle fibers which appears an astral array this is called as astral spindle fibers feature of animal cells so astral spindle fibers are not seen in plant cells so they are called as anastral spindle fibers so spindle fibers are formed from the centrioles centrioles are the constant structures above the nucleus in the animal cells centrioles are not present in the plant cells but you may ask one question sir how the division is taking place in the my plant cells at the time of plant at the time of mitosis uh, at the time of chromosomal division two centrioles are formed from the cytoplasmic uh, proteins uh, this is also known as mtoc instead of centrioles we call it as mtoc microtubule organizing center microtubule organizing centers are formed from the tubulin proteins of the cytoplasm in plant cells in animal cells what happens already existing centrioles will duplicate in the synthetic phase and again subsequently they will be uh, transported to two different poles at the end of the prophase in late prophase nuclear membrane and nucleolus will disappear so nuclear membrane and nucleolus here you can see this is a, a nuclear membrane nucleolus is there here nucleolus is here and this is nuclear membrane both nuclear membrane and nucleolus will be disappeared in the disappeared in the later prophase now let us we see the metaphase how beautiful it is uh, when fluorescent microscope uh, treated cells uh, so the metaphase the chromosomes are arranged in the middle of the cells chromosomes are arranged in the middle of the cells so let us see, see these are the different chromosomes mentioned here in the middle so different chromosomes are there this is fluorescent micro fluorescent uh, dyes are used to observe how the chromosomes are formed here there are n astral spindle fibers these are astral spindle fibers astral spindle fibers is the feature of animal cells whereas n astral spindle fibers is the feature of plant cells so chromosomes arranged in the mid plate at metaphase plate it equatorial plate it is known as metaphase in metaphase the chromosome shows maximum condensation in a metaphase the chromosome number is uh, clearly visible we can count the number of chromosomes in a particular plant cell uh, example typical example to understand the mitosis is onion root tip cells typical example plant material to observe the mitosis is onion root tip cells typical example to understand to study the meiosis is uh, that is uh, uh, pollen grains or pollen mother cells that is anther anther is the um, material for the study of meiosis whereas uh, the root tip cells of onion are the best material to study the mitosis chromosomes uh, are at us associated with three types of spindle fibers here i will explain this is the cell these are the chromosomes mm, directly i am moving to the anaphase stage 
at meta phase they are something different at meta phase the chromosomes are attached in the mid plate so i'm uh, just i would like to show all the type of chromatid fibers chromosome fibers spindle fibers now it you see from centromere to the poles from centromere to the poles they are called as chromosomal fibers or discontinuous fibers chromosomal fibers are discontinuous fibers they are called as uh, they are attached from poles to centromeres and the other type of fibers you will observe from one centromere to other centromere one centromere to other centromere so uh, one pole to other pole these are called as polar fibers polar spindle fibers are continuous fibers so we have continuous fibers pole to pole we have discontinuous fibers pole to centromere of the chromosome we have another type of uh, um, uh, fibers that are present in between the dividing chromosomes it will be clearly visible after the end of uh, after the end of ana phase you can you can you very easily see these are called as interzonal fibers interzonal fibers helps in the formation of mesh work after the telophase in this mesh work the golgi vesicles will deposit the calcium and magnesium so in the after the telophase what happens these are the interzonal fibers golgi complex brings calcium and magnesium this is deposited already two daughter nuclei are divided now the interzonal fibers along with calcium and magnesium that forms a, a cleft or cross wall between the divided two daughter nuclei it is called as cell plate or phragmoplast cell plate or phragmoplast after this plant cells will develop specific cell wall between two cell walls whatever phragmoplast or the cell plate is there it will become middle lamellum dear friends you should have to remember the middle lamellum is the middle lamellum is present in between the primary cell walls it is the cementing layer it is formed of calcium magnesium pectates it is formed from the golgi vesicles the cell plate method is seen in plant cells whereas in animal cells the mitosis is preceded by furrow method or constriction method furrow method or constriction method is primitive method as it is also seen in the case of binary fission of bacteria so friends remember in cell division of cytokinesis of plant cells is cell plate method of animal cells is furrow method or constriction method furrow method is primitive whereas cell plate method is advanced cell plate is the precursor of middle lamella so middle lamella is seen between two primary cell walls of plant cell wall so what is first formed layer of the plant cell wall that is the middle lamella what is outermost layer of the plant cell wall that is the middle lamella what is the outermost layer of an isolated cell isolated cell will have only primary cell wall so outermost layer is primary cell wall if it is in a tissue we need tissue what happens two cells are compactly arranged between the two cells what is present middle lamella is present the middle lamella is made up of calcium magnesium pectates so what happens outside the cell middle lamella is there outside the cell middle lamella is there then what happens outermost layer is known as uh, middle lamella an isolated cell will not have middle lamella so for an isolated cell outermost layer is primary cell wall so dear friends i am here discussing about the metaphase in metaphase the chromosomes are highly condensated chromosome number is countable what is the best stage to study the chromosomes that is the onion root tip cells mitosis mitosis onion root tip cells are the best typical material for the study of chromosome number shape structure chromosome number shape structure but you should remember if the same question appears like this in which of the following stages of mitosis chromosomes will get the peculiar shapes shape v shape l shape j shape i shape uh, they will be uh, getting their shapes uh, according to the position of centromere during anaphase during anaphase the question is different and answer is also different question is uh, which of the following stages chromosome number structure shape uh, is uh, easily visible that is metaphase in which of the following stage stage of the cell cycle we can observe the particular or peculiar shape of the chromosome that is anaphase so now in metaphase what happens in metaphase what happens all chromosomes align to the central portion of the cell uh, alignment of cell chromosomes into the central portion of the chromosomes is known as congression or orientation of the chromosomes on the mid plate or metaphase plate is known as congression from meta metaphase plate if the chromosomes are moving towards to the poles that is called as disjunction 
కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ డిస్జంక్షన్ వాట్ ఈస్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ యూనియన్ వాట్ ఈస్ డిస్జంక్షన్ సపరేషన్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద ఆపోజిట్ వర్డ్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ టూ స్టేజెస్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ మెటాఫేస్ డిస్జంక్షన్ అండ్ అఫేస్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ అండ్ అఫేస్ నాన్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ క్రోమోజమ్స్ విల్ ఎవర్ కమ్ నాన్ డిస్జంక్షన్ క్రోమోజమ్ విల్ ఎవర్ గో బోత్ నాన్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ నాన్ డిస్జంక్షన్ పర్టికులర్లీ ఇన్ ద కేస్ ఆఫ్ మియాసిస్ నాట్ ఇన్ ద కేస్ ఆఫ్ మైటాసిస్ ఇన్ ద కేస్ ఆఫ్ మియాసిస్ ఎదర్ నాన్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ ఆర్ నాన్ డిస్జంక్షన్ నాన్ కాంగ్రెస్ అండ్ అబ్ నార్మాలిటీ నాన్ డిస్జంక్షన్ అబ్ నార్మాలిటీ బోత్ బోత్ ద కేసెస్ they allow the formation of enucleid enucleid cells enucleid cells means actual cell content actual number actual number is known as um, 2n actual number is known as 2n diploid number is known as 2n so addition of deletion or chromosomes to that basic diploid complement of the chromosomes is known as enucleid enucleid me any in enucleid we have 2n plus 1 trisomy 2n plus 2 tetrasomy 2n minus 1 monosomy 2n minus 2 nullisomy this kind of abnormalities will takes place during the during the meiosis when non congruence and non disjunction is taking place so centromere lies in the equatorial plane and the metaphase the um, chromosome schemes to the mid place and centromeres are arranged spindle fibers are arranged and attached to the so um, kinetic course of the centromeres now the next stage is anaphase the smallest stage in anaphase interzonal fibers are small contracted appears at equatorial line centromere of each chromosome splits uh, and division of centromere takes place so in g1 the chromosome is like this dear students you observe this finger in g1 the chromosome is like this in s space the chromosome is duplicated in s space the chromosome is duplicated and prophase compacted and in metaphase that is lying like this in metaphase this is like this done so in anaphase this is separated in telophase these are completely separated what is happening in the anaphase this is the splitting of centromere takes place the duplicated chromatids are separated duplicated chromatids are separated in anaphase ana means go back phase means stage so going the chromosomes are going back it is believed that 30 atp is required for bringing one chromosome to the pole itself of course it is out of syllabus interzonal fibers expanded between these are the interzonal fibers expanded this is chromosomal fibers these are continuous fibers so the interzonal fibers expand they push the chromosomes towards the opposite side this is called as pushing pushing means interzonal fibers they push the chromosomes to, towards the poles and the chromosomal fibers they, uh, they pull the chromosome the, they pull the chromosomes towards to the uh, poles this is called as pulling interzonal fibers centrifugally expand so that uh, that they, they increase the space between dividing chromosomes when the chromosomal fibers uh, contract and pull the chromosomes towards to the poles then what happens by pushing and pulling mechanism the chromosomes will be reaching to the uh, poles so <clears throat> when the chromosomes are reaching to the poles they will develop the nuclear membrane nuclear uh, nucleolus and everything is developed this phase is known as telophase telophase is completely opposite to the prophase in prophase nuclear membrane is disappear nucleolus is disappear chromosomes condensated into chromatin condensated into chromosomes i repeat the different opposite words in this telophase nuclear membrane reappear nucleolus reappeared chromatin is uh, chromosomes are decondensated into chromatin so this is what the telophase at, at the end of telophase two daughter nuclei are formed i told you earlier after telophase this is a furrow method in case of animals furrow method so this is a plate method in uh, uh, plants this is a plate method in plants in cell plate is formed cell plate is formed cell plate is formed that is cell plate method example in case of plant cells clear cell plate is formed if the cell is furrowing inside the plasma membrane like this the plasma membrane i have shows the furrow and furrows expand and the two daughter cells are divided this is in case of animal cells furrow deeply continuously ultimately the furrow reaches cell divides into two daughter cells in animal cell cytokinesis is centripetal manner towards to the furrow develops towards to the center and it is called a centripetal manner <clears throat> but in plant cells what happens the middle interzonal fibers calcium magnesium pectates deposition is taking place so middle lamellum is developing from center to periphery that is centrifugal method
phragmoplast or cell plate cytokinesis takes place by cell plate method formation because constriction is not possible cytokinesis in plants constriction is not possible because of a hard cell wall so in plant cells the kind of division is kind of division is cell plate method now many golgi vesicles arrange themselves to equator form that forms the phragmoplast between dividing cells dividing telophase telophase after telophase phragmoplast is formed by the interzonal fibers and vesicles of golgi complex er fragments of spindle fibers are also collected to the equator collectively that forms the cell plate golgi vesicles secrete golgi calcium and magnesium pectins further modified into middle lamella in plant cytokinesis occur by centrifugal order cell plate formation from periphery to the uh, from center to the periphery this is called as uh, centrifugal manner so now let us we see the significance of mitosis for growth it is required for repair it is required so wound healing division wound healing division or uh, it is also known as uh, uh, growth and development takes place by means of division so the significance of uh, mitosis you will see what all the things first uh, mitosis is an equatory equational division it is a homeotypic division it is a somatic cell division it is a vegetative type of division it is a homeotypic division the daughter cells will have equal number of chromosomes to the uh, parental cell daughter cells and parent parental cell will have equal number of chromosomes each mitosis will give two daughter cells so in the textbook it is a statement deployed in animals uh, deployed cells uh, will undergo deployed cells will undergo mitosis but in lower plants but in lower plants uh, haploid cells also undergo mitosis haploid cells uh, the growth development reproduction xyz anything it is a haploid cell in case of bryophytes in case of bryophytes the plant body is gametophyte the cells are haploid if the gametophyte wants to produce one anthrocyte which is also haploid that possible division is uh, mitosis in in haploid organisms even in reproductive cells the mitosis takes place for the formation of sperm cells and egg cells because the plant body itself it is the haploid so development of organism occurs by mitosis every organism starts its life from a single zygote the textbook statement important every sexually reproducing organism starts its life by a single cell called as zygote zygote continuously undergo mitotic divisions to produce embryo embryo further develops uh, development of different st embryonal stages again the divisions are the mitosis so growth and development takes place by means of mitosis maintenance of stable chromosome number within the individual it is because of mitosis or cell repair happens uh, due to mitosis so rip, um, cell repair in case of human beings it is 5 into 10 to the power of 9 cells uh, formed from uh, in uh, in human beings per day itself that is the rate of uh, mitosis during the requirement so dear friend this is the significance of mitosis in significance of mitosis uh, we have discussed the different stages of mitosis we have discussed different stages 